the mournful wail of a distant fire whistle. That's my only company tonight. The moon is nearly full and so bright that I barely need my flashlight to do my outside rounds. The building is large and old. The corrugated metal shows scars of rust and decay. During the day, it's a bustling warehouse full of comings and goings. At nighttime, it becomes like a tomb where every footfall echoes back to me. Every night, I do my rounds out of habit and obligation. However, in the seven years that I've worked here, nothing has ever happened. So far, tonight's no exception. I sit outside of my guard shack each night for the first couple of hours. And then after I do my first round, I unlock the warehouse, go inside, and use the small, dingy bathroom. This is my routine. The warehouse is sparsely lit with only the exit signs and the occasional emergency light to stave off total darkness. Inside the bathroom, a dull yellow glow from the single bare light bulb hanging from the ceiling is just enough for me to read by. Every night is the same. I come in, turn on the putrid yellow light, take my seat and read my newspaper. The place always makes sounds even when it's empty. The harsh buzzing of the exit light, the scrapes and skitters of unseen creatures, and the creaks and groans of the metal building complaining when the wind tests its resilience. The first year that I worked here, it was a toss-up between whether I would have a nervous breakdown or just quit. After a while, I finally decided to stop listening to these small noises and start listening for the big ones. However, six years later, I've never heard any big ones. Until tonight. The warehouse sits on the outskirts of Frost Creek, halfway up the mountain toward Hallett. In other words, halfway between the middle and nowhere. The view is quite beautiful on a clear night. The lights of Frost Creek shine like a Christmas tree, with the mall being the angel on top. It's beautiful and yet I still feel isolated from the rest of humanity. Sometimes that can be a good thing. No one ever really bothers me up here. It's like my own little kingdom. My reverie ends as I return to reality and finish my first round, and I go inside to do my daily business. I'm midway through page two of my newspaper when suddenly three knocks sound on the door. They aren't fast, but slow and methodical. A chill runs up my spine. Thoughts of malevolence and mayhem dance like sugar plums through my head. Fear washes over me like a hard rain. When my mind finally recovers, reason starts to kick in. There's no way anyone should be in here. I've just done around and there was no one. I haven't even heard anyone approach the door. Not even these skitters of the mice and other creatures that make the warehouse their home. It's decision time. How long do I sit here? Do I pretend that I didn't hear it? Did I really hear it? Do I answer as though it's no big deal? Do I yell out and threaten to call the police? My hesitation makes me wonder if they're going to knock again. So I sit and wait, ignoring the pins and needles that are creeping up the sides of my legs. Nothing happens. After two minutes still, nothing has happened. No knock, no sound. Hello? I yell out. No answer. I summon my resolve. This is my job and I have to go do it. I finish my business and give my legs a minute for the blood to start flowing normally again. And then I pull out the flashlight. I turn it on but also in the back of my mind think that it's good to have something in my hand that I can use as a weapon. I reach for the door and turn the knob slowly. And then I open it quickly. I flash my light out into the warehouse, panning around but finding nothing. I lean out and check around both corners. I step into the large room and all I can see is a whole lot of empty. I don't breathe a sigh of relief though. There are many places, dark corners and crevices that someone could hide in. Hello? I call again, hearing the echo return my own voice. I decide to do another round to be sure that no one is here. I go very slowly and methodically, 
checking all the dark corners under the desks anywhere somebody could hide. My fear rises and falls like a roller coaster as I search, find nothing, sigh, and then move on to the next dark area to search. Each time that I peek around the corner, my fear whispers of unnamed, unimaginable horrors. Every time I find nothing, I breathe a sigh of relief. Only when I startle a rat out of its hiding place do I see anything. I'm not sure who jumped higher, the rat or me. I make my way back to the exit, check my watch and find that I've been searching for an hour. Now it's time to go back outside. Fear whispers to me once more, especially when I find the door locked. Why would anybody take the time to relock the door? I abandon the thought, open the door, step outside, and I flash my light around. Nothing. I check the ground for footprints other than my own, but there aren't any. It seems like I'm the only person here. I do another round around the outside of the building anyway, just to be sure. After finding nothing, I go back to my guard shack and I try to walk the tightrope between vigilance and paranoia. Eventually, boredom overwhelms both and I finish the newspaper reading that had been interrupted. The final two rounds of the night produce nothing. Only a pair of glowing eyes in the bushes catch my attention. My light shakes until the rabbit that they belong to hops away from my light. My shift ends uneventfully. I grudgingly chalk up the knocks to my imagination, go home sleep, and the next night come back to work again. I nervously laugh to myself as I walk my first round of the night. I try to pretend that last night's incident was pure imagination, and I continue my routine as normal. Around two hours later, I go inside to the dingy bathroom and sit down to read my paper, glancing at the door as I do. I shake off the notion as nonsense. When I turn to page two, I hear it again. Three knocks. Goose flesh rises over every inch of my body. Exactly the same sound at exactly the same time as last night. I can't deny it or write it off as imagination. It's real. I put my paper down, finish my business, and I run to the door. I whip it open so hard that it bangs off the wall. The bang echoes as I flash the light all around the warehouse. If I catch you, you're going to be sorry. I yell, hoping that it sounds more intimidating than I feel right now. No answer and no sound save the fading echo of the banging door. The lack of sound is quite disturbing. There should be footfalls of someone running toward the exit. There's no way anyone could get from the bathroom to the exit that quickly. This is getting creepy. Again, I do a thorough walkthrough looking for anything out of place, but I find nothing. I do a walk around the building and again come out empty. At this point, I think finding nothing is worse than finding something. At least with something you know you're not going crazy. I go back to my normal routine, but I'm vigilant to the point of paranoia. Anything that moves, even a windblown leaf, has me nearly jumping out of my skin. The rest of the night passes without incident. The next day, I struggle with the desire to call in sick. My curiosity and my sense of duty are the only things that prevent me. I go to work, do my normal routine, go to the bathroom when I usually do. This time though, I just wait inside the closed door. I wait and wait and wait, but nothing happens. I check my watch and it's 15 minutes past when things usually happen. What's different about tonight? Is it over? Is whoever or whatever done playing their infuriating little game? I open the door and nothing's there. I close the door, shrug, go over to the toilet and sit down to do my business. Two minutes later, you guessed it. What's going on? I ask myself with my body as taut as a rubber band. Can they see me? I look all around at the ceiling, the walls, every place. I see no place anywhere that a camera could be hidden. Why would anybody want to do that anyway? I have to make another decision. Do I jump up and try to catch them again or do I just ignore it? I choose to ignore it. And again, my nerves are on edge. 
nothing else happens the rest of the night. Home, bed, try to sleep. Unexpected a bright idea. I come in early for my shift and I speak to the supervisor. I tell them that I had a feeling that someone had been messing around because I had been hearing noises on my rounds. I tell them that I'd like the company to purchase a few motion detector cameras to set up inside. He hesitates for a moment, but then he agrees. When my shift rolls around, I do everything the same and I hear it again. I ignore it. Two days later, I come in early to watch the crew install the cameras. They set up two outside and two inside. When they set up the inside cameras, I suggested to the worker where to aim the one near the bathroom. But there's nothing over there, only one small room in the corner. He says, trust me, that's where I've been hearing the sounds. He rolls his eyes and aims the camera as I direct. After everything is set up, they give me an iPad and show me how to use it to view the cameras and to zoom up close. When I start my shift, I have a bounce in my step and a song in my heart. I know that this is the night that I find out the truth. I can hardly wait for my first round. I watch the clock and it's finally time. I hide the iPad inside my newspaper just in case whoever can see me, and I went for my first round. I finish up and I head for the bathroom. I sit on the toilet and I pull out the iPad, and I check the cameras. They all work fine. I zoom up on each one, leave the bathroom camera view on and wait. Three knocks. I look down at the screen but it's blank. All I see is static and then it suddenly clears up. No, I say, frantically tapping the rewind button. And the video rolls back and I play it again. No static. Camera working perfectly. And then static for six seconds and then back to normal view. It can't be, I say, shaking my head. I rewind again and go back to watching all four cameras at once. Only the bathroom camera went to static. I rewind again, paying close attention to the time when the static had appeared, and then I watch each of the cameras during that time period and see nothing out of the ordinary. None of them show static either. I lean back against the toilet, too frustrated to be as terrified as I should be. I try several more times to rewind and catch something, anything on the video. Nothing. I have no idea what to do. My disappointment is so profound that I sit there, unthinking and unmoving. I don't know how long I've been sitting here, but my legs are numb. I set the iPad down and I try to get up. Pins and needles run up and down my legs as the blood begins to circulate. I limp over to the door and reach for the doorknob. And that's when realization crashes in on me and my hand starts shaking. All I can do is stand here and think. The more I do, the more I remember. Every other night after the knocking, there was nothing there. That doesn't comfort me much, but it gives me enough courage to turn the doorknob and step out into the darkness. I'm not sure what I'm expecting to see when I step through the doorway. Perhaps some unholy creature too evil for my deepest and darkest nightmares, waiting to swallow me up. But all I behold is an empty warehouse. The warehouse looks the same as it has every other night. I step through the door, whipping my light back and forth. Nothing's here, I whisper, causing the words to faintly echo back to me. I walk cautiously back to my guard shack, sit and tremble as I watch the video over and over. There's nothing to see. I tell myself not sure if that's what I want to hear. Right before the knock, the camera goes a blank with static. Right after the knock, it clears up. Something was there, I said to no one, but it wasn't something of this world. It takes every ounce of will to step out of the guard shack and to do my next rounds. When I go home that morning, I can't sleep. All I keep thinking about is that incessant knocking. When I get ready for my next shift, it's a bitter struggle to come to work and not call off sick. In the end, I just have to know what's going on. Am I going crazy? Is somebody messing with me? I can't imagine anyone taking it this far. I go to work and do everything exactly like the previous night. 
After my first round, I go to the bathroom, sit down, and watch the camera. I see the static. The blood drains from my face as I hear the three knocks. So, here I sit, and now I know it's not a fluke. Something unseen interfered with the camera. No matter how many times I watch the video, there's nothing there. I finish my round on autopilot. My mind is shut down and my body is taken over, going through the same motions that I have for the past seven years. I'm in a state beyond petrified. It's like I'm in a walking coma. I can only do my routine. That's my only defense against madness. I sit in the guard shack and stare straight ahead for four hours until my shift is over. What do you do when you come face to face with the supernatural? When you come face to face with the brutal realization that your existence has been interacted with by something else. Something you can't explain or see. Something that terrifies you. What do you do? I think about it all through the day. Sleep is impossible. All that remains is one last test. I don't want to, but if I don't try, I'll go through the rest of my life wondering. I go to work, do my normal routine, take my break and wait. I watch the screen, see the static and hear the knocks. Come in, I said. The doorknob slowly turns and the door inches open. A mist creeps into the room followed by an overwhelming stench. I'm frozen with fear as a massive putrid claw with three fingers on it grabs the door and pushes it open. I don't have the words to describe the abomination that's before me. My mind mercifully shuts down, plunging me into darkness. I open my eyes to an empty room. Strangely, everything is on its side. I lifted my head off the floor to reorient myself and try to get up but immediately fall back down. I look and my pants are bunched up at my ankles. I pull up my pants and I rise. My eyes dart around the room searching for the hideous beast that had opened the door. I find nothing out of the ordinary. A glance at my watch shows that 30 minutes had passed. Was it a dream? Did my overactive imagination take me for a ride? I pick the iPad up off the floor and rewind through the videos. When I reach the most recent one, I press play. As usual, there's an image of the closed door and then the screen goes to static. But this time, the screen remains static for 11 minutes. When the image returns, the door is open. My blood turns to ice as a thought races through my mind like a bullet. Has uttering those two simple words, Come in, invited something truly heinous into not only the room, but also my mind. What have I done?